What up, party people? I'm DIY Dane. This is a long shot garage, and I am back. You may have seen the last video where I installed these cabinets. They were from Lowe's. They're Diamond Now cabinets. They're available off the shelf. They're pre built. They're affordable. And you know what? I like them a lot. Well, now I have to top these cabinets off with some countertops. I got a quote to do quartz. It was $1,600. That was a really good deal, but this is a small kitchen, and I don't have that kind of budget, and I don't have the time to wait for it to be manufactured. So, you know what I did? I found another bargain item off the shelf at Lowe's, laminate countertops. Yes, that's right, laminate. I know what you're thinking. My grandma had laminate. I don't like laminate. Laminate's ugly. It's changed. Laminate is not what it used to be. They realized that no one wanted it and they came out with some great new styles that look like stone, like granite, like marble. You've got to check out the new laminate options that are out there. I did and I'm glad I did. Well, I'm about to install laminate countertops on these counters on these cabinets, and I'm gonna show you how to do it and save a bunch of money. Check this out. I know about you guys, but I don't think that looks too bad, especially for around 300 bucks. This is a good start. I, I don't have to cut the long piece. And honestly, you probably should have a friend help you because I didn't think I could lift this long 10 foot piece by myself without damaging it anyway. But I got lucky and I did get it in place. The smaller section isn't really a big deal, but this is the one section I have to cut off. And you gotta be real careful when cutting laminate. I'll show you how to do that. The reason the cabinets have to be spaced up is because the drawer will hit right here. The drawer is gonna hit on this edge if I don't uh, space it up. So some cabinets, you need this overhang. They're built that way. These cabinets you need the spacer. These are three quarter inch pieces I cut to fit the nailed them in place and they'll do exactly what I need them to do. I was careful to leave a gap at the edge because I do need to nail a piece of particle board to the bottom of the laminate countertops for the end piece that gets ironed on. I was careful not to nail any of my spacers in the way of this sink. I don't know if you can tell, but there's very little gap and that whatever is there is gonna fill in silicone just fine. Coming from the other side, there's a much bigger gap. So I got the countertop lined up square with the face of the cabinet the best I could because I can't really go by the other piece quite yet because it's gonna need some little bit of trimming to get it all kind of in place. But I know my big holdup is this back corner where it's touching, but I have a large gap up here. So I'm just gonna use my pencil to describe it, but rather than messing with a compass like I would normally do, I'm just gonna put the pencil on the wall and roll it along the edge. I've got this section of the countertop exactly where I think it's gonna land. I marked out my line, being careful to really pay attention to where the face frame ends, because that's really what we're gonna make our measurement off of. And you've really gotta get this right the first time. Not only can't you add any more material once you cut it off, but you also don't want to cut this close and then plan on trimming, say, another eighth inch or another sixteenth inch. Not with the finished laminate edge. If it was raw wood and you were going to add the laminate later, yeah, that would be no problem at all. But this is a situation where you've really got to measure twice, three, four, five times and make sure you only cut once. As of right now, this is all the material I need to take off of this piece. I'm sure there'll be a little adjustment along the way, but I'm gonna start here and see where that gets me. And to remove this material, I'm using a belt sander. When you use a belt sander, any power tool, you should always use proper hearing and eye protection, which I'm totally doing. I'm back for a second round of sanding. I did trim the larger piece just a little bit. Believe it or not, I actually kind of hacked off the tip where it was pointy and made it somewhat flat. So I did that so it would go back into the corner further. And then when I reinstalled this piece, I realized I could trim a little bit more back here to further get everything to fit better into place. I'm actually gonna shave down the tip a little. Sounds crazy, but I'm gonna do it. Just a little bit. I took my time on this corner to get the pieces lined up with a nice tight gap. In the end, what I was able to do is tighten up the gap on this wall, which was really pretty big, even with the old countertops. This used to be a quarter inch gap. Now it's an eighth inch gap. So this mark here is the cabinet itself. And this here is the face frame. That is the furthest out mark I have. And I've added a quarter inch on top of that because I can't be under. And if it's over a little bit, that'd be fine. So I used a framing square on the front and drew myself a line. 
And that's my cut line. I double checked the front versus the back. The back didn't show me a square measurement, but the front did. That's why I'm measuring off the front or squaring it off the front anyway. And now I'm going to take some measurements just to double check. I'm 11 and three quarters off the edge, front and back. Square that way, square that way. Next up, I'm going to nail a fence to the countertop bottom so that I can run my circular saw along that fence and get a really, really straight cut. So I'm marking out where I'm going to install a fence so I can get the cut exactly where I want it. I started by setting the circular saw in place and putting the blade right on the line that I want to cut. And I made a mark at the end of the shoe at the bottom of the circular saw. Then I measured and I have 11 and three quarter to the line I want to cut and five and a half from the uh, edge of the shoe to the blade. And that leaves me with 17 and a quarter, which is right where my mark is. So I know that I can mark 17 and a quarter along this bottom of the uh, countertop and it'll put me right where I want to be. On top of that, I'm going to check with a framing square. Everything's lining up so far. This isn't an easy cut. The fence is going to help but I have to cut up now the back, across the bottom, which isn't so bad. But then I have the lip at the edge I've got to cut around, being careful not to damage the laminate. To help prevent the chipping, I've added tape on the other side of the laminate where the blade's gonna come through. We know that's 11 and three quarter inches from the edge. I actually left the front and back so it wouldn't fall off because I don't want it to break laminates. Now I've got to make those cuts very carefully. This was a nerve wracking cut. I took my time and I made it happen and it's just right. It's a really clean edge. I think it's cleaner than the factory edge was. Next up is the end cap kit. So basically you get these pieces of particle board that you nail into place and then you iron on this piece of laminate. Then of course you have to trim it, preferably with a router. I'm not going to lie, I suck with a hammer. You want to get that piece of article board lined up real nice with the edge. And then try not to knock it out of the way as you nail it in place. Okay. That doesn't suck. My fingers are going to fat. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to keep that edge lined up along the way. You want this as flat as possible because that's where your laminate is going to adhere to. What were they thinking with nails? I'm not sure how you would actually nail the end piece in place. This was easy because I was on a firm surface. This is not. Whatever. Sometimes you just got to improvise. I'm going to glue this in place. And in fact, I'm going to glue the other end. I don't like the nails. This stuff's too delicate to hammer. I got glue and I got clamps and I ain't scared. What does Puddin say? Mama didn't raise no punk. Yeah, this is what I think of your nails. The provided nails were fine, but because I wasn't a fan, I'm gonna go ahead and add a few nails with the pneumatic nailer. I don't think any went through. Just kidding, none went through. Should have done that from the start. This is the side I glued in. It should be fine, but you know what? Just for good measure, I'm gonna go ahead and add a few nails to this too. So this is the end strip that comes in the kit. Now we have a nice flat surface for that to adhere to. It's got glue on the back and use a, just a household iron to uh, heat up that glue and get it to stick in place. But first, I'm just gonna go over with a little sandpaper, a little sanding block, just to knock down any possible high spots. Doesn't take too much. And then you wanna blow this off or clean it off real good. You don't want any dust on there. Well, I brought the iron from home. Yeah, we don't use that much. You wanna use medium heat or 300 degrees. You don't wanna go over 300 degrees. Of course, my iron doesn't say anything about degrees, but I'm in the middle of the heat range. Fingers crossed that works. So 
So I think this back corner wanted to curl up a little bit because it was pulling away, but the glue was hot. So I got the damn cloth to cool it down and hopefully set that glue. Seems to be holding now. So you use a router with a flush trim router bit. And you don't want your router bit to stick out too far. You want it just far enough in to cut the material. You don't want it out real far so that it can cut the surface of the countertop. So you want to be careful. And yes, I am doing this inside because this piece is too big to move. There's not a lot of material, like I said, so it's really not going to make a huge mess. I did trim the other piece outside already, but I do have hearing protection because routers are pretty loud. So I clamped the uh, countertop down after I pulled it away from the wall a little bit to make room for the router. Sometimes when you do DIY stuff, you've got to improvise. Here's a perfect example. Now this isn't ideal, but I've got each of the countertop pieces balanced between the cabinets themselves and these sawhorses that I taped two by fours to. It seems sturdy enough. They're not super heavy, but I do feel that if I were to flip these upside down and attach them, I wouldn't be able to get them back over without breaking something because they're kind of heavy. And once they're together, they're going to be real heavy and then awkward with the L shape. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to glue these corners as per the directions. Then I'm going to go ahead and climb under there and install the clamps. Wish me luck. And don't attempt this at home, please. I smeared the provided glue onto that joint with my finger. I didn't have much choice. Then I wiped off the excess with the damp cloth. Then I crawled under and installed all four of those bolts. I had to work quick before that glue set up so that I had some time to adjust those two halves. I got them really nice and flat. So this is the problem. There was a lot of cussing involved. I had to be under the countertop, get these in place, make sure they didn't fall, and tighten them down, all while making sure that gap from the top was nice and flush. Good times. Ultimately, nothing fell on me, and it worked out. The absolute most crucial measurement you'll make on this whole job is determining the length of the screw that holds down the countertop. What I found was a number 10 sheet metal screw that is one and a half inches long was perfect. Now, theoretically that only bit into the bottom of the countertop, which is a three quarter inch piece of particle board. It only bit into that a quarter of an inch, but the brackets in the cabinets that hold these screws flexed quite a bit. So there's a little bit more than a quarter inch of screw in the countertop and they're solid. They're not going anywhere. Working into these cabinets is super fun. Not going to lie. It's hard to find the hole. Ah, ah, ah. This is a family channel. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to pull down on the countertop. Go in the right direction. And there we go. I don't know if you can see, but this bracket has arched up quite a bit, but I'm nowhere near popping through the laminate at the top. The sink is actually pretty difficult. The Kohler sink that I bought, which is a nice sink, doesn't come with a template, but I guess they're trying to save a buck and they don't have a template. They just say, throw the sink upside down and trace it. But it wasn't working for me. So what I did was I made a template. I did what they said. I threw some tape down. I traced out the sink. I deducted a quarter inch. The inner line here is a quarter inch in. To find the center, I opened the door, took the level and just found level with this door. So I'm straight up and down, dead center where that door is. The question has become where to put the sink front to back because I'm centered. The dimensions are pretty good. I could probably cut it, but there's one small problem. I don't have a tool that can cut a line a quarter inch off that uh, backsplash. The big question is now that left and right and center is all taken care of, where to put this sink front to rear? Well, I figured out what I'm going to do. I'm just going to center it front to back. It's centered left to right. I got that figured out. And all I can really do is center it front to back. And then I'll just have to devise a way to make that back cut. I know I can do it. It's not a huge deal. I guess I'll take my initial plans and scrap them. What can I say? Sometimes you just got to do that. I got rid of the dishwasher. Maybe I can just get rid of the sink. No? Yeah, probably not.
All right, kids, I'm gonna commit. Grab the biggest drill bit I've got with me. It's no going back now. Oh, man, I hope I measured right. I like clean cuts and I cannot lie. I hope I don't get a copyright strike for that. Blade selection when cutting laminate is really important. What I'm gonna use is this actual laminate cutting blade for my Bosch jigsaw. I'm sure most blades or most jigsaws have a variety of blades you can choose from like this. And if you can't find a specific laminate cutting jigsaw blade, use a fine tooth blade like this. And you may notice the teeth are straight. They don't go up, they don't go down. They're just a straight cut. And there's a lot of teeth and there's a lot of small teeth. And that helps make for a fine, clean cut. Wish me luck. Good idea to let the blade stop before you. Even though I was uber careful when I measured this out, I'm still cutting to the inside of the line. I'd rather come back and trim a little if I had to than cut too much. Well, this is as good a point as any for me to put in the brace. If I keep cutting, this piece is gonna fall before I'm done cutting and we're gonna chip and break stuff and it's gonna be a mess. So you wanna support it. I got a, just a scrap piece of OSB here and I'm just gonna screw it into the center which is going in the trash anyway. Now I have to go get another saw to cut the back. I got it cut. And you know, my jigsaw wouldn't fit back there. So I had to break out the big guns. It wasn't ideal, but it did work. It did fit back there just fine. It was kind of hard to see the blade on the line. So it's not the cleanest cut I've ever made, but it'll be just fine. Ooh. Whatever sink you get, you're gonna get some kind of mounting clip like this. These snap into the bottom of the sink and then the countertop gets sandwiched in between, something like that. I ran the nuts down. As, uh, as far as I could to get it close so I don't have to do this while I'm under the sink all the way around. I taped up the hoses. So far that's helping quite a bit. I'm trying not to get silicone anywhere other than where I want it. Get a nice bead of 100% pure silicone around the perimeter. Oh, so far so good. Okay, I'm not mad at that. Gonna get those front clips positioned properly. All right. I gotta make sure the sink is sitting in the hole where I want it. I don't want it cockeyed one way or the other, too far forward, too far back. So yes, there is a reason I have a rag in my pocket to wipe any excess silicone and there will be excess silicone, but that's what you want. It's in the hole left to right. It matches up with the cabinets perfectly and my spacing is even on the front corners. Now I get to crawl under the sink and tighten everything. Joy. I can't complain, but I will anyway. Right now I'm just gonna go through and tighten down these nuts just by hand. Here's what it looks like under the sink. There's those clips and you wanna tighten those down, snug them down, but not too tight. You can see the silicone squeezing out. That's good. We want plenty of silicone to keep water out of here. There is the bottom of the faucet. So this collar right here, that spins on the threads and then you tighten it down with the screws. I'm using a socket to tighten down these. That's our under the sink fun. I got a fresh two of Alex Plus latex acrylic caulk. It's white, it's paintable, it's water soluble. So in case you didn't know, you can cut the tip off the caulk with your caulking gun, at least the better caulking guns. Then there's this little rod in the front that you've got to stick down there to break the seal. I tend to keep a paper towel handy at all times for just such things. Don't forget to put that away. You will poke yourself. All you do is caulk along the gap. Now I have a bit of a gap here on this side. The other side was very tight, but this had a 3 8 gap in the previous countertop. And you see, I'm not even being that clean here. I am just hitting it. 
filling in with caulking. If you're worried about running your finger along a chemical like this, you can throw on a rubber glove, but I don't know. I see lots of people do this. I've been doing this forever. Not dead yet. Again, paper towel comes in handy. Now I have a bucket of water and I have a sponge. And this is the kind of sponge you get at the uh, tile aisle for grout. You can use any sponge, but these work great. The rounded corners really help. You don't want to wipe the caulking out of the corner. You just want to smooth it out and wipe away any excess. And that's it. You know, you probably can't see it on camera, but it is a clean, clean joint. I love it. Well, that's it. This kitchen is done. It's done as far as I'm going to do it anyway. You know, I was pretty happy with these laminate countertops. They went in fairly easily with minimal cussing. The hardest part, I would say, is cutting the edge. And if you take your time with that, you'll be fine. And really what I didn't expect was joining the corners was pretty difficult. Uh, but it's, it's, it's doable. Anybody can do it. And I think they look good. What do you think? Do they look like granite? Would you do laminate in your project? I'm in these countertops, 350 bucks. I don't think you can beat that. And I didn't have to wait for them. That's a big deal right now. And you know, it really any time when you're talking about getting stone done, you're a few weeks out. That's a difficult product to work with and it takes time for them to get everything just right for your kitchen. Well, I picked these up at Lowe's and I installed them the same day. Honestly, I don't think you can beat them. That's it for this one. I'm done, I'm over, and I'm on to the next project. Pretty soon I'm gonna do a video on the Long Shot Garage and what, really what it's all about, because it's, it's not about kitchen remodels like this. I'm finally getting somewhere with a project I'm doing, and I'll give you an update here. Uh, within the, one of the next few videos. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Remember, if I can do it, you can do it.